Hello everybody! So now I feel like I've done enough pastel artwork to give all of you a nice overview or review of all the budget styles that I own and then you can make a decision on what you want. Okay, I'm not advocating that you should buy any of the pastels that we use but more of giving you an idea of what's available out there in the market and you can make your own decisions. Obviously, if you are a professional in the art community and already own some of really expensive styles, then this review or overview is probably not for you. Alright, so without further ado, let's start with the most expensive set that I have. The most expensive set of pastels that I have is this Mangyo Galleries Extra Fine Pastel. It's 90 colors and it's the most recent acquisition. These 90 colors come in a set two trays. Okay? And these trays are arranged in such a way that they stack on each other. And they have a really nice range of colors. Really beautiful too. Now, what you see here is not how the colors were arranged when they first came in. So I had to rearrange them according to the way I like them so that it's easier for me to reach for the colors from me. Alright, so this set pastels cost about I think it was like 107 Singapore dollars for 90 colors. And that puts us to somewhere around 70 or 80 USD before any taxes or shipping. I am going by the exchange rate of 1 US dollar to about 1.3 Singapore dollars. So at about a 30% discount of the price in Singapore dollars, you get around 70 to 80 dollars. I'm guessing without a calculator. So I think they are pretty reasonable and the quality is pretty decent. Actually, this set of pastels are probably the best pastels that I have ever used. Budget pastels. So they're still under the budget range because at 90 sticks at $106 for the whole entire set, this puts the pastels at slightly over a dollar a piece which is very very recent. Now I'm not sure if any of these sticks are available individually because I haven't looked online to see if I can actually buy them individual sticks. Okay, but you can buy them smaller sets. I think they do sell them smaller sets of like 12 and 24 and 36. I decided to get a set 90 because I felt like I wanted more colors. Now these pastels are really soft and they can be a little bit crumbly because they don't have all the binders that hold them together to make it make them feel like solid stick of pastels. So they feel really fragile. If you if if you were to drop it on the floor, they would definitely break. Okay, so I'm trying to show you how they blend up with three close colors, red, orange and yellow. 
I'll be doing the same for all the different sets of pastel to show you how they blend out. And as you can see, they do blend out beautifully. And they have a very fine feel to them as in like the powdery texture of this pastel. As when I was doing all the other pastel art with my fingers that you see on videos, these pastels actually felt like they were made from really fine pigment grounds. They feel really fine, like really fine powdery texture, even finer than baby talcum powder. Alright, so for what I'm doing here is I'm trying to show you if they can actually, two colors can actually mix together to form a different color. And they can, but not in the way they expect. So I would expect red and blue to give me like a really nice purple, but in this case it gave me like a really dark grayish purple. So the conclusion here is that they don't really mix that well. But if you do mix red and yellow together, you do get orange. Okay, so as I will show you coming up next, I will be mixing both red and orange, no sorry, red and yellow together to get orange, you will see here. Now you may have noticed that it's producing a lot of dust and that's because I'm not using pastel paper here, I'm using ordinary drawing paper, the 200 GS drawing paper. And they're not made for pastel, so they, all the pastels would appear to be really, really dusty. Okay, especially so for all the softer pastels. So from here, you see that, oh my god, it's producing so much dust. But you will see later on in the video, demonstrating them on another piece of pastel paper. The dust is reduced by about 80 to 90 percent. So I'm just blending out a blotch, a block of blue to see how the other colors layer on each other. So the white in this set isn't really opaque as you can see. You can see through to the blue. And the yellow, you will see that it also, the blue picks through the yellow to show some green. So as I mentioned before, the colors do mix, but some colors don't mix very well. So next, I'm going to show you how water-soluble these pastels are. And it is not very water soluble. When you apply water to that patch of blue that I've just put down on paper, the water kind of just floats the pigment around them. So even though it looks like the water is washing out some of the blue color, it's actually carrying the blue pigment that I just laid down on the paper and carrying them out 
and therefore they are not really water soluble at the moment. So now I'm throwing them out on the red powder that is remaining on the paper to see if they're actually water soluble. And the conclusion is the same. They aren't really that water soluble. So these pastels aren't really water soluble at all. If you apply water to them, they just kind of carry the pigment. The pigment just kind of floats around with the water, but never actually dissolving in and now we move on to the next set of galleries at soft pastels okay this set of 48 i own this set of 48 for probably close to five to six years and you can see that it's very well used and they are the galleries soft pastel they're still soft pastel they're not really soft as the more expensive brands like Sennelier or Terry Ludwigs etc so they are considered soft because you really don't have to press very hard to get a lot of pigment on it. And this is the case for the other set of pastels as well. So these two sets of pastels can be considered like semi-hard pastels. So they're not really soft enough to be considered the soft pastels like the more expensive sets that you can buy but they're soft enough that they aren't considered hard pastels as you will see in the next two sets of pastels are hard pastels so i'm going to be showing you how they blend as well now and again you will notice that it's producing a lot of dust on this And as you're already seeing, they do blend very well. This set of pastel suffers from the same downsides of trying to mix red and blue together. You get like this grayish blob that looks kind of purplish but not really purpley, purple at all. But when you mix red and yellow together, you do get this beautiful orange. So next, we're going to move on to the opacity test of the white color and yellow color.
And as you can see, the set fares the same. This set is in the same league with the previous set on the opacity of the white and the yellow colors. Now we do the water test. Again, this set. Again, the colors don't really dissolve, but just moves with the water. So I was curious to compare the other one, this set. So I just did a little swatch out on the other side just to see. But the results were the same. They don't really dissolve at all, but the pigment just moves with the water. Next, we're going to test the Sakura Novel pastels. They come in two different sets of 24 with different colors. I've already rearranged the colors in these two sets, so they're not the original arrangement of colors that you see on the cover. The cover colors are the colors that you see when you open the sets before I rearrange them. Now these are considered hard pastels. They are really hard, as you will see later on. So now I'm doing the blending test. And as I start this, I start noticing I really have to press really hard to get any pigment on the paper. And when it does come out on the paper, it's a little dusty as well. So even though it looks like I'm not actually pressing, but I'm really actually pressing really hard here to get colors to come out at all so they're really good for this set is really good for nice details because of how hard they are and the pigment load for this set isn't really high which is kind of expected because of how hard they are And this set of Sakura Novo pastels was also a fairly recent acquisition. Now I'm testing out how well the colors mix. And to my surprise, the colors on this set of pastel, the colors on this set of pastels actually do mix better than the other two sets of pastel. Maybe because they aren't as opaque as the other two sets, so allowing the colors on the bottom to pick through. As you can see, the red and the blue does produce a noticeable purplish tint in this case. So now I'm testing out the red and the yellow. And again, as expected, they do produce a really nice orange when you mix the red and the yellow together.
Next, we're doing the color opacity test. So as you can really tell, as you can already tell when I'm late, still color, it's not very opaque. But it does produce very crisp, clean lines. Much better than the other two. But because it's not really opaque, except for the white, the yellow you can barely see and it comes up green. The white is probably partially because it's scraping some of the colors off the paper. But the white is more opaque than the other two sets. Now, this set of Stell is actually the most water soluble of all the four sets that I'm showing here. As you can see here, the colors are kind of dissolving. Not completely, but partially. So I'm testing out red now to see if that's really the case. And the results were very consistent. They're partially water soluble. So not satisfied, I'm doing another test to see if they really are that water soluble. And the results were consistent with the previous two tests. As you can see here. And last, we have we have the Lyra Poly Crayons. Now, it's listed as being a soft pastel, but actually it isn't. It's considered a hard pastel. And it only comes in a set of 24. These are all the colors that they have in their lineup. And this is also the oldest set of pastels that I've owned. I've had this set since around 2013 or 2014. Now, as you can see, when I'm laying down colors, this set produces the least amount of dust, even on a non-pastel paper. This is, as I mentioned earlier, this is just normal drawing, 200 GSM drawing paper. And you can see that it's hardly producing any dust at all. Now, they are not as hard as the Sakura Novel. But they are definitely more pigmented than the Sakura Novel. Next, I'm testing the mixing of colors with red and blue again to see if it produces purple.
and is expected it us produce a purple hue. More so than the other two sets of soft and more expensive Nestel. So next I'm testing to see if red and yellow makes orange, which I'm expected I'm which I'm expecting that it will and it does. Next is the color opacity test. And this white produces the most opaque white of all the four sets here. Now the yellow is quite as opaque, but the white definitely is. And now we have the water test. So as you can see here, the pigments in this set of pastel is not completely water soluble, but it is more water soluble than the other two soft pastel sets. So I would say that this is partially water soluble. but not all the pigment dissolves for some reason unlike the Sakura Novel set So next, I'm testing out the pastels on pastel paper. As you can see here, the dust is drastically reduced on piece of pastel paper, even for the soft pastels. And in case anybody is interested, this pastel paper is 160 GSM Mangyo Galleries pastel paper. They are pretty economical. They're not exactly budget pastel paper, but they're cheap enough that you can call it budget pastel paper. And I bought a whole booklet of it in A3 size. And as you can see, I have the same problem here with the Sakura pastels. You have to press really hard to get any color to come up and it's really dusty even on this paper. With Lyra Poly colors, as you can see here, it produces almost no dust at all. But because it's a hard pastel, it's, I have to press really hard to get any pigment to register on the paper as well. Next, we have the light fast test. This is a 120 days light fast test that I did in 2019 of the two sets of pastels that I own at that time, which is 
the Mangyu Galleries, Soft Pastel, and the Lira Polycolor Crayons. I do not have any results of light fast tests for the other two sets because I have not gotten around to test them yet. This was the very first set of light fast tests that I have done for any of my art supplies. So the first that I'm going to show you is the Mangyu Galleries Soft Pastel set. So you will see that in this picture, you see three strips here. Okay, you can totally ignore the strips on the left where it says like fast test Mangyu Galleries. I was testing out my pens for light fastness. And since we're not talking about that, you might totally ignore there. So what you're focusing on are the other two strips on the right of that. So the first, so there are two strips and they're divided into halves. So the first half of the strip, is the strip that's being kept in an envelope in a cabinet that is not exposed to the sun at all. And the strip on the right is the one that's been exposed to the sun. So as you can see here, there are some colors here which are evidently fugitive. Okay, so you can see that the purples and the pinks are the most fugitive of the set. And then there's also another fugitive color in the blue, the light blue in particular. With the Mangyo Gallery Soft Pastel, there is a surprise here with light fastness. Usually when there are fluorescent or neon colors in a set, they are the first to fade out even before any of the colors start fading because just of the nature of what they are okay now with this set it's a really huge surprise to me that none of them actually faded at all after 120 days on hanging on a window, with not windowsill, but the window frame, the top side of a window frame, and there, it's not showing any significant fading at all. So this came as a very surprise to me. And it's also good news, in a way. Next, I'm going to show you this, the Lyra Polycolor Light Fast Test. Again, you can see a almost unnoticeable line running through the middle of this whole strip. Okay, you can see the line from the top, but when it gets to somewhere in the middle, you can't really tell anymore. So. You can see from this strip that there are two sets of fugitive colors, especially the pinks and purples and the light blue again. So there's a set of five colors here that are somewhat fugitive. Again, the light blue it is barely noticeable, but there's some lightening in the colors. And the other four colors are like totally noticeable, that there's a shift in the hue of the colors.
So there you go. This is my pastel comparison of four different budget sets of pastels. So you may choose to grab one of the sets if you would like, but from my point of view, I think the set with the most potential will be the Lyra Polycolor set. And if you're going for a budget soft pastel set, yes, I would recommend the Gallery's Extra Fine Soft Pastel set. Because to me, I think that it's better bang for your buck, as in they're only slightly over maybe less than one US dollar, one USD, depending on the price that you pay on the US side. I mean, from my side, it's less than one USD per stick, and it's slightly over a dollar, Singapore dollar per stick as well. So I feel that that is prob that will probably give you your best bang for your buck. And if you're looking for a hard pastel to start out with, I highly, highly recommend Lyra Poly Colors. Although the only downside is that it has only 24 colors in that set, but it's really cheap. I bought that set pre-COVID time again for 24 colors for around 30 Singapore dollars so it's again it's slightly over a dollar per stick I don't know how much the price is now post COVID so you may want to check at your local store or your favorite online retailer to see how much it costs all right so this is the end of my pastel comparison I hope it was informative for you to make an informed decision if you're looking for a set of pastels. And I hope to see you again in my next video.